Hey everybody, we have a brand new tutorial here. It's going to be a little bit interesting because we're going to talk about the conditional button. The conditional button is very useful for a lot of things, primarily to see if players have particular things in their inventory or in their hands. So right now we need 10 gold, as you can see, to get rid of this barrier that we can't get through. So let's grab 10 gold, come over, use it, and we can make it in. All right, so if we go back to here, reset the barrier, try this it says we need gold so we'll do this now i have 10 gold so we could do this again but i'm going to show you another thing if we step on this trigger here it's going to require us to have more gold why because we set it to 30 via code that's cool so let's grab some more gold all right so now we have 30 we could just come up here and use this but if we want to we can actually hide this conditional button and instead do it via code so if i come across here it takes my gold and the barrier opens. So that's the second way that we can use conditional buttons. Now, in the last way that we can use conditional buttons, we can have a guard here. And if we wanted to make sure that the player had something in their hands at the time, like they're using a particular weapon, we can even use inventory like the gold. But if we go up to this guy and kill him, then the barrier disappears because I had a pistol in my hand and that is not tied to this conditional button it's tied to another one that we can't see which is right here but usually you just hide that somewhere i want to show you guys some stitch so let's take a look at how we code this up and build this in uefn all right we're inside of uefn now and i'm going to show you all the devices that are required to make this happen it's actually reasonably simple which is why i want to explain this because you can use this for a lot of stuff so we've got our triggers here and if you're new to UEFN or Fortnite Creative, triggers are just a way to have a player either shoot or step on or do a thing um, that could make another thing happen. It's called a trigger. And we have our gold here so we can pick up some gold when we need it. It's just an item placer device. And we have our first conditional button here, which is going to accept gold and gold only. We have our barrier device here and we have a guard spawner here. Now, if you are in fact new to UEFN, all of these items are in the content browser down below inside of devices. And you can do a search for things like barrier like that or uh, conditional like that and trigger like that. It's right here. And of course, the item placer, which has the gold in it here. And you can set that up inside of the details panel. If we click on this guy here, we can see in the details panel here that we can set up our item list. It has one item in it, and that is gold, which of course, when you open this thing up, you can just search for gold. And there it is right there. So that's how we would set up our item granders. And then same thing with the conditional buttons. The conditional button has key items. Same idea, if this wasn't in here, if we cleared this out like so, can we come back in here and just put gold? and go like that and now it says it needs 10 gold to work because the key items required is set to 10. now this is how we could set it manually in the device itself but we're also going to change it in code the other thing to keep in mind is if you want the conditional button to take the items that the player is interacting with the conditional button for you would check the consume key items setting right here the other settings for a conditional button are sort of more visual so you can show the key that i'm with only the key or a key and an icon or an unknown key like these kinds of things you can experiment with to see what you want to show or you can completely hide it of course we can also set it to be a hologram only or if you want the whole object to show up but i put mine behind wall a little bit so if we just pull this out you can see that it's a whole device as well but i just wanted the hologram so i sort of tuck this in where the hologram is visible and then in the visible during game i just put hologram only i also recommend that you set the interaction radius to at least one so that players don't have to be right up next to it to make it work okay so that covers the gold conditional button the barrier device is just a barrier device is not doing anything and the guard spawner is simply a guard spawner also available inside of the devices we just type guard in here and it'll be a guard spawner this spawns a guard and the only thing about him that i've changed is that i placed him on the team wildlife and creatures team so that he'll attack my character and i can also do damage 
and eliminate them. Other than that, there's really nothing different in this device settings. Okay, for the second part of the verse part of this tutorial, it's important that our characters have a particular pistol in hand. So we've used an item grander here that has a combat pistol, uh, and I've also added a shotgun into its granting and a grant on game start because this conditional button has a pistol set up into it. So this is how you can set up whether or not the player has something in their hand or whether they just have it in their inventory, a thing and not just gold. So you can, you know, activate something or make something happen when another thing happens. So in this case, we're going to detect when the guard was eliminated. And if the guard was eliminated with a pistol, then we're going to take down the barrier. So it's kind of a handy thing to be able to do with a conditional button. And the last thing here is our device which is my conditional button game manager. It is the glue that makes everything work with our triggers to, of course, our HUD device here that shows when we don't have enough gold to so the conditional buttons and guard spawner and also normal spawners if we want to the player spawner. Those come in game, you always get those right from the get go. And I just have a normal prefab here so we have something to look at. OK, so let's get into the verse code and how to make this all work. If you're unfamiliar with how to make a verse file, the first thing to do is to head up to the verse menu, open the verse explorer, come down to the verse explorer, and then we can just right click on content, create a new verse file. And inside of here, we would call it my device or whatever you want to call it. And that will make your verse file that we're going to code stuff into. So I've already got one. I'm going to cancel this and we're going to go to verse and get started on making our conditional button game manager device. The device is something that you can have that ties your code to everything that's in your scene so you can make things work. So we've got nothing exciting going on here. We've just got a couple of libraries kind of thing that need to be loaded in for every device. OK, so in our con button game manager, which is just my device that I'm going to use, uh, we have our on begin, which gets fired when the device is instantiated when your game starts. So on begin is where we're going to set up a bunch of stuff for our devices. But first, we need all of our devices, don't we? So I have those ready to be copy and pasted in. And let's go over them really quickly. We have our conditional button for gold, and it is a conditional button device weapon conditional button for that pistol. We also have our barrier, our guard, our need more gold HUD. That's a HUD message device that shows when you don't have enough gold. And we have our reset barrier trigger because this is for our testing purposes, or if you just want to reset the barrier for some reason. And we have our take 30 gold trigger, and I'll show you why we call it take 30 gold, because we're going to set the conditional button to then require 30 gold instead of 10. So it's an extra feature that I thought I would show you guys. So this is all the devices that we need. If you want to know what any of these do, you can control click the name of it, and that will open up the fortnite.digest.verse file. And that will give you an idea of everything that you can do, like the activated event when it fires off, when somebody uses it, you can enable and disable it, which you can also do with toggle. You can call activate. You can get the item count required. You can get everything that you probably really need, including is holding item or has all items. These are both useful ones. We're going to use is holding item. And we're also going to use get item count because we can tell how many of a thing that's in the conditional button the player has. So back to verse in our on begin, we need to figure out what we're going to do with all of these devices. How are they going to work? So to do that, we're going to delete this block and paste in the things that we need to do. You might notice these are red little squiggly things. It just means that we haven't made this function yet. So it's going to say there's an error here. No identifier. All right. So our conditional button, which is our gold one, uh, we want to know when it's activated and we can call on activated, which can be a function we'll write soon. Not enough items event. So if player doesn't have enough of the thing that the conditional button has, then we're going to call on not enough gold because that's the it's the gold one. The guard, the eliminated event, we want to catch when that guard's eliminated so we can actually call on guard eliminated. If we look inside of the guard spawner device, we can see there's spawned event, alerted event, all kinds of stuff in here, damaged event, and of course, eliminated event or eliminating event. So you can catch when they've uh, eliminated somebody as well. Andy, we have our take 30 gold trigger, which is in this case used for our testing. The triggered event will call on trigger for 30 gold. Reset barrier trigger resets the barrier. We're going to write this right now as well. OK, let's work through our list of functions we need to write. So we're going to have the reset barrier one. Triggers always give us what's called an optional agent. We know that because this is an optional agent because that is a question mark ahead of the type of object that it is. Hopefully this isn't confusing. 
This is all stuff that you can just straight out memorize. Triggers are always written like this. And uh, we don't actually care though. We don't care which agent it is. We're simply going to enable the barrier, right? Very, very easy. Okay, the next one we can do, which is really, really easy, is the on activated. So if the player has enough gold when they walk up to the conditional button, we're gonna print out a little log here. It's activated so we can see that it's happening and also disable the barrier, right? Very, very easy one again. We're taking in the agent, which is not an optional agent. It's just the straight out agent object because the conditional button must have a player that interacts with it. So it's not gonna be optional or maybe, uh, whereas triggers turns out Maybe they could be the player that fires them. Off. Okay, the next simple one that we can do is the on not enough gold. So with the conditional button, if there's not enough items that the player has, not enough gold in this case, then we are simply gonna do need more gold underscore HUD dot show to that particular agent, which is just the HUD device. HUD message devices are really common. You'll use them a lot in your games. And in this case, we're just going to simply show it, which says you don't have enough gold. Okay, so for the next one, we are going to do something a little bit more. We need to get when the guard is eliminated. So if the guard is eliminated and we're holding the pistol because we have a conditional button with the pistol in it, we want to grab the agent that eliminated that guard. So we can do that with the device AI interaction result, which gets passed in when the guard gets eliminated. So this result, we can look inside this. If we control click this, we can see source and target. So the agent that triggered the interaction, which is also an optional again, so we have to check that out. In this case, we're going to set if this thing exists. So right now I've called it agent, but you can call it anything you want. It doesn't matter what you call it. I've just called it agent because that's the common name uh, that we would use for players. And so if this equals something, so if the result, the source, question mark, if this is legit, if this doesn't pass back false, then I want you to do a thing. So in this case, we're gonna check the weapon conditional button to see is holding the item that is in that conditional button for that agent. Is that agent holding the pistol? If I eliminate him with the shotgun, this wouldn't fire off properly because we're looking for the pistol. Then we disable the barrier and we disable the guard as well so they don't keep spawning out. So that's kind of handy as well. Now, the very last thing that we need to do is the trigger for setting 30 gold and also to check programmatically. This is the coolest part because you can just hide your conditional buttons and not have players directly interact with them and have something else trigger them. And that's what I really wanna show you guys. On trigger for 30 gold will fire when the trigger is triggered by the player when they step on it, or you can have them shoot it, or you can just trigger it from some other thing. And uh, we're gonna grab the agent that did that. So again, we're doing the same thing. We're checking to see if this object exists inside of maybe agent optional here, right? Because this is an optional object. So it's really common, just something that you need to memorize and how it works. Very easy to do. We're going to then set the item count required to 30. So maybe this is a part in your game that's got like an easy path. You're like, okay, if you're gonna take the easy path, you need more gold. Take the hard path then just set it to 10. But I wanted to show you guys that you can change that item count required straight with code. So it's really cool. So then we wanna see how many of the particular item of that conditional button the player has. And we're using zero here because that's the first item in the list of items in the conditional button in that array that we set up, passing in the agent, which is the player. And uh, we print out, how many do they have? You know, do they have enough? We're not sure because we're going to do the check down here. So we do a little bit of a comparison. If the player has greater than or equal to 30, then we will activate the conditional button. Remember the conditional button is set up to take. So we actually don't have to use an item remover to take gold out. The conditional button will just take it out. And if not, then again, once again, we call the need more gold HUD to show for the agent because they don't have enough gold. So. This is really cool. There's three ways that you can use a conditional button. You can mess around with it with code, or you can just have them interact with it directly. I think it's really useful. I'm pretty sure there are a majority of the maps that would use these things for something. So you guys might want to as well. All right, the last thing you need to do is bring an instance of that device that you just made right after building it. And you can build your device by going up to verse, build verse code and that will build your device. And it should show up inside your content browser. So you can see mine's right here. But bring it into the scene. You can just place it on the ground somewhere. We're going to go and make it invisible in game. And then here are all of the devices that it needs to get hooked up to work. So 
our gold one, we can use the little picker here and we can just go pick there. And our weapon one is here and our barrier is here and our guard is there. And our HUD is here. Grab the reset barrier trigger, grab the reset barrier trigger here and the gold checker is here. So now everything is inside of the device that needs to be hooked up and you can run the game. Hopefully that's been interesting. If you have any questions, let me know. As always, the code is sitting on Patreon if you don't want to type it out, but this isn't very much. I expect you guys can just type this stuff out and learn a lot for it. So that's it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.